What you see before me here is the Ataser L2-02 20 watt laser engraver slash cutter. This thing is a beast. It's packed with a lot of features, a lot more than a regular hobbyist CNC engraver would have, and a couple of extra little perks as well. I'm going to cover all this in today's review, so stick around. The laser comes packed in a very sturdy box with custom cut closed cell foam padding and cardboard supports. On top of the package you will find an assembly manual as well as a basic operating instructions for laser gerbil and light burn. The laser module on this guy is beefy. There's a lot of weight to it and it feels very solid and well made. This is the air assist module. It will help me make clean cuts with minimal burning. More on that later. As I continue to unbox the rest of this engraver, I can't help but notice the quality of the parts I'm pulling out. Everything is custom made for this laser. The legs, the rails, the control screen, everything is made from this purple anodized aluminum and none of it is made from off-the-shelf extrusions like you find in cheaper laser engravers. That is a machined aluminum idler wheel assembly. Again, the quality of the laser speaks for itself. I see a small Wi-Fi or Bluetooth antenna. We should be able to test that out later. The parts are very well machined and they slot together perfectly. Assembly is somewhat complex, but all the parts are well labeled and the assembly instructions are easy to follow. Be sure to give yourself plenty of time and follow the instructions closely and you'll have this thing up and running in no time. The two Y-axis pulleys are linked together with this rod. This is the most challenging part of the assembly. Follow the instructions closely because if this is installed incorrectly, you could damage your laser. In order to install the x-axis gantry, you have to first disassemble the x-axis rail. It can be tricky to get it apart, but that is just because everything fits so tightly together. For some reason, the limit switches are not pre-installed. Maybe it has to do with avoiding shipping damage. Maybe it has to do with how hard it is to get those tiny screws in the hole. Notice how the laser gantry rides on those linear rails. This is a high quality upgrade over the V-Groove roller bearings you see used in cheaper laser engravers. I'm a little concerned about how the air assist hose is kinked as it exits the X-axis gantry. It definitely makes for a clean looking install, but we shall see if it interferes with the air assist performance. The laser module attaches to the gantry with a single thumb screw then it is a matter of finding and attaching all of the cable connections. The touchscreen is kind of cool. It has magnets to stow it away on the side of the laser. Finally, I hook up the power, USB, and HDMI cables, and the laser is ready for testing. The touchscreen has some rudimentary functions built in. You can change settings such as flame and tilt protection. And if you have a USB drive inserted, you can also launch G-code files, move axes, 
frame and focus your laser along with some other basic functions. The first thing I like to test is the manufacturer's claimed speed. The Ataser L2 claims an engraving speed of 54,000 millimeters per minute. If true, it is the fastest laser engraver I have ever tested. Let's see how it goes. I'm engraving on some rather hard MDF, and now I have sped up the footage, if that isn't obvious. As you can see, 100% output at 54,000 millimeters per minute is more than enough to make a nice deep engraving on this MDF board. Let's try cutting. This is 5 millimeter plywood, and I just drew a basic shape in laser GRBL. I was either running the laser too slow or the output too high, maybe a combination of both. There was some charring. I adjusted my settings and tried again. This time I got a much better result. One more try with even more tuned settings and it is almost perfect. Now that I have my settings dialed in, I wanted to try to cut out something relatively complex and delicate. Again, this is 5mm plywood and no air assist. Next I wanted to see how well the laser will engrave steel. This is 1080 knife steel and as you can see it does a decent job. I think if I coat the steel with black paint the laser would etch even deeper. Now onto the air assist module. I could not get it to work with Laser GRBL. I'm not sure Laser GRBL supports it, so I ended up downloading a trial of Lightburn so I could test it out. I found this cool pattern online and I cut it on this 4mm plywood. Note how clean the lines are with no scorch marks. That is the air assist at work. As you can see now, the plywood is super flexible thanks to that laser cut design. Here are some of the claims on the Ataser website. The Ataser L2 has 24 watt power output that can cut 20 millimeters of wood or 12 millimeter acrylic in a single pass. Thicker materials can be cut using multiple passes. Z-axis control allows you to cut thicker materials by dropping the laser focus on each cutting pass. It is equipped with a safety key, flame detection, and tilt detection all designed to protect you, your workspace, and those around you. Blazing fast speed of 54,000 millimeters per minute reduces working time. 32-bit motherboard allows you to process larger files at faster speeds. Air assist module helps make cleaner cuts and helps keep the laser module cleaner for longer. After testing with this laser, I believe all of these claims to be truthful with no exaggeration. This is what I like about the Ataser L2 24 watt laser. Powerful output and fast speeds. This is great for production work and provides access to lots of different materials for cutting engraving that cheaper lasers cannot handle. Beautiful design and sturdy construction. 
This laser was not built using off-the-shelf parts. It looks like the machine was designed and built from the ground up using quality aluminum parts that were manufactured specifically for this product. I especially like how the frame encloses the drive system, so the belts and linear rails are less likely to get gummed up with dust and debris. Ease of use. If you already know your way around laser GRBL or light burn, this laser connects right up to those programs with minimal configuration. This is what I don't like about the Ataser L2. No emergency stop. Sure, there's a key you can switch off, and you can stop the machine via the touchscreen, a USB connected computer, or even the app. But when everything is going sideways, nothing is better than a big red button that immediately stops everything and puts the machine in a safe state. Difficult assembly. This is a tough machine to put together. If this is your first CNC machine, or you struggle with patience assembling IKEA furniture, this may not be the laser for you. Limited functionality of the touchscreen. The touchscreen is a nice addition, but I only really have used it to update the firmware of the machine. It is much easier to control the machine with a USB connected PC or Mac than it is to try to use the limited functionality provided via the touchscreen. The app. Speaking of limited functionality, remember that Wi-Fi antenna we saw during assembly? There is an Ataser app that lets you connect to the machine. That is about all it allows you to do though. Also, it connects via Wi-Fi as a hotspot, so it doesn't connect to your local wireless network. Instead, you have to connect to it as a hotspot. Only then can you attempt to control the machine with the app. I say attempt to control because the app is clearly unfinished with a lot of bugs. I tried all the different features, and the only thing that worked was the pause, resume, and stop functions. This app is ambitious. When a taser fixes it, it should be able to take photos, generate G-code from those photos or other files, and send them directly to the machine for engraving and cutting. Someday you may be able to freehand draw on the screen and engrave that without the need for a PC. Unfortunately, like I said before, most of these functions currently don't work. When I reached out to a taser, they sent me a new firmware which changed the color of the touchscreen interface from blue to orange, but it didn't fix the issues with the mobile app. Here's the good news. The app at best is merely a novelty and never really would replace a PC for generating reliable G-code for a laser engraver. Even though it doesn't work right, I don't really feel like I'm missing out on anything because in a normal scenario, I wouldn't be using it anyway. Same goes for the touchscreen. It's nice that they included it, but I don't really see the need to have it in the way that a 3D printer might need a machine interface. So how do I feel about the Ataser L2? I actually love it. The build quality and the speed alone makes this laser a very attractive buy for someone looking for a good laser to add to their lineup. It might be a little spendy, and I think that is why a taser has added it on items like the app and the touchscreen, but I can't argue against the price considering everything you get here. I'd love to see this unit come in a more basic configuration without the Wi-Fi and the touchscreen for maybe a few hundred dollars less and then it would be an absolute must buy in my book. However, in its current configuration with the performance it provides, it is a very good deal and I am very comfortable recommending it to anyone that is interested in a laser in this price range. So just to summarize what I covered in the review, for a diode laser, this thing really packs a punch and just about every brand out there claims that their laser is a pro. You know, everybody adds the word pro at the end of their model numbers. A taser doesn't do that, but this is definitely a pro grade laser. And it can do, it can cut a variety of materials, it can engrave a variety of materials, and you're really only limited by your imagination. I had great results on the first try on all the different things that I had attempted. And I have to say, the Air Assist is a game changer as far as getting really clean cuts on wood. Um, I unfortunately was not able to try it on acrylic, but I have cut acrylic on less powerful lasers, and so I know that this one is more than capable of doing it. 
So if you're in the market for a powerful laser that's very easy to use and it seems to handle whatever you throw at it, I would suggest looking into the Ataser L2-02. Like I said in the review, this thing is beautiful. Uh, it's not just made from off-the-shelf parts. These parts were made and machined specifically for this unit. Everything is self-contained. You don't have any exposed belts or wheels. And that third axis really makes a difference when you're cutting thick materials because you can step down each pass deeper and deeper until you cut through whatever material you're trying to cut through. I'm pretty excited to learn more about what I can do with this laser. And if you're excited to learn more about this laser, I will provide a link down in the description below. And keep an eye out down there for a discount code as well. Any purchases you make through that link help support this channel directly, and I greatly appreciate any support that I can get. I can't express enough how this laser is in a league of its own. It's about as professional grade as you can get before you start getting into those fully enclosed lasers with the CO2 modules and everything. This one is a diode laser. It just uses mirrors and focusing lenses and it achieves the same power as a CO2 laser. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.